Ben from Winchester, England. I was watching the Bret Hart episode of the Monday Night War, and one of the topics covered was WCW's misuse of Bret post screw job, holding back on bringing him in, immediately sticking him in the NWO, and all the terrible WCW booking. I was wondering if there was any reason for holding Bret back. Hogan possibly concerned his thunder would be stolen. And you can can you think of any other major cases of a company completely misusing talent or wasting an opportunity the way WCW did with Bret Hart? Well, how about WWE bungling the single biggest angle ever handed to them on a silver platter in the invasion? Does that count? Because that would be at the top of my list as far as bungled storylines. Uh, as far as have they ever mistreated anybody else the way they did Bret? You know, I would kind of throw Ric Flair in that category. And I think it was off and on. I mean, they would go through these periods where Flair would be the champion and he would kind of be the top guy, but then he wouldn't be the champion and... And that's fine, he doesn't have to be the champ, but they would treat him like garbage. And then we knew the animosity with him and Bischoff, and then they did these storylines where Flair was in a mental hospital, and he got buried in the desert somewhere, just all this nonsense. For a guy who really should have been put up on a pedestal and held in such high acclaim as your all-time great world champion coming out there in a suit, you know, and, and they just made him into a joke. And when Hogan came in, and look, I mean, Hogan knew he could work against Flair and he could beat him every single time. Uh, practically every single match they ever had in WCW, with few exceptions, I think, Hogan always beat Flair. And he would no-sell Flair's offense, and Flair was made to look like a complete and utter joke. So I think their treatment over the years of Ric Flair was just horrendous. That's not how you treat a guy like Ric Flair, who was the, the franchise of that company. You know, this this all-time great world champion was reduced to being a comedy character. I mean, that, that to me, that, that's pretty inexcusable. And with Brett, I, you know what? I don't know what was holding them back. And I think Bischoff in interviews, may, maybe he even admitted that they could have handled things a little bit differently. No shit. No shit. You had this guy, Bret Hart, coming off the hottest angle. It wasn't even an angle. I mean, some people think it was. But, you know, the hottest story in wrestling was the screw job. Everything was about what happened in Montreal. At that point, even though he was the one to get screwed, there was no hotter commodity at that point than Bret Hart. So Bischoff should have had this plan in his head. Hey, listen, this guy, you know, he may not be this hot for that long. We've got to take advantage of this. We've got to capitalize on this. Whether that means immediately injecting him into the, uh, you know, the, the program with Hogan and Sting, probably not the time for it just because you had been building Hogan and Sting for like a year and a half. That should have just been able to play out on its own, let Sting win the title at Starcade, and then maybe you can go right into a sting Bret Hart feud from there. Uh, you know, the, I'd have to sit down and think about what was going on back at that time in 1997 in WCW, but, you know, Bret, they held him out because my understanding was that Bret was still under contract to WWE until the beginning of December. Uh, I think his contract was to expire a little earlier. He went to Bischoff and said, listen, can I get an extra week? And I think Bischoff was going to give him an extra week because that was when Brett thought the plan was he would drop the championship at the December in your house pay-per-view, possibly to Steve Austin. Obviously, that never happened. But Bischoff did grant him that extra week. So I don't know precisely the date the contract was going to expire. They may not have been able to use him on television right away. Uh, but even when they did, you know, putting him as a referee, I think, for Eric Bischoff's match against Larry Zbysko, whatever the hell his role was on that pay-per-view, was, was completely ridiculous. And then the way they used him was completely ridiculous. I agree. I'm sure Brett agrees, too. I mean, th this notion that... And you mentioned the Monday Night War thing, and I wasn't going to talk about this, and I don't want to go on too long about this, but I will say, people have asked me, have you been watching the Monday Night War? I have not. I saw the first episode, and then I didn't watch a few. I did watch the Bret Hart one. <clears throat> it was well produced. There was some good stuff in there. But when it came to their narrative of what happened in Montreal and the whole screw job and Vince really didn't have any options and this guy's going to show up on TV with the belt and we can't have him do that and all this... All of this nonsense, all of this fiction, I just, I was like, I've seen enough. If, if this is how all the Monday Night War episodes are going to be, then you know what? I don't need to watch them. The whole thing was fiction. And again, I, I don't feel like going into the whole thing right now, but, uh, you know, if you've read the accounts of what actually happened in Montreal from the people who were covering it at the time, and even things that Bret Hart himself subsequently has said... 
Uh, it just doesn't match up. I mean, it's a nice story for WWE to tell that Brett, Brett put them in such a position where they absolutely had no options at all whatsoever. Vince, his back was up against the wall. All of this stuff, it's just not true. It's just not true. I mean, there was a whole scenario that Vince himself had pitched to Brett to try to smooth things over, and Brett had agreed to it. And then when he went back to to Sean and Triple H, you know, because Triple H was in Sean's ear at the time, and Triple H told Sean, under no circumstances at all, are you to agree to lose to Brett? Because in his mind, who does this guy think he is? Well, he walking out with a championship. We can't let him go to the other show. That's ridiculous. And Triple H put this idea in Sean's head. And so Sean listened to him, and he was like, no, I don't agree with that scenario, which made Vince look bad because he had just pitched something to Brett that Brett agreed to. Now he's got to go back and tell Brett, well, Sean doesn't want to do that. I mean, there were so many little things that happened that just were not talked about, that never get talked about by WWE because it's their spin on things. Uh, It just pissed me off. So I just had to mention that here. Uh, If you watched it and you enjoyed it, like I said, it was well-produced, and it wasn't you know, 100% fiction. There was certainly some truths in there, but... They told the story they wanted to tell. And if all the episodes are that slanted, then I won't waste my time watching every single one of them. I'll pick and choose the ones that I want to watch. 